Good morning, my name is Cheryl Rex. I am the mother of Lance Corporal Dylan Marola. I wanna thank Congressman Issa and all the dignitaries that are present today so that I may have this opportunity to speak publicly for the first time since the botched and chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan, which took the life of my son and 12 other service members, 170 Afghan civilians, and left hundreds wounded. I am seeking answers to my many questions that have gone, gone unanswered since August 26, 2021. Dylan was on his first deployment to Jordan when the withdrawal from Afghanistan began. That quickly turned into an evacuation of our Afghan allies and civilians when he and his battalion were then redirected to ISTIS in this process. My son was only 20 years old. It begins with the moment when I saw two uniformed Marines awaiting my arrival to inform me that my son had been identified as one of the 13 service members that had been killed at Abbey Gate during Operation Freedom Sentinel, also known as Operation Enduring Freedom. I was told to pack an overnight bag and be ready to go to Delaware for a dignified transfer to receive my son's body. Myself and the other families of our 13 were awaiting for the plane arrival to the United States. When Joe Biden, our elected president, entered the room, when he approached me, his words to me were, my, my wife Jill and I know how you feel. We lost our son as well and brought him home in a flag-draped coffin. My heart started beating faster and I started shaking knowing that their son died from cancer and they were able to be by his side. Also wondering how someone could honestly sorry, be so heartless to say he knew how I felt a little over 24 hours and learning of my son's death. After this encounter, I have never had any personal correspondence, nor has my son been honored or his name spoken by this commander in chief or his administration on what I feel is because of their failures and poor planning to exit our troops from Afghanistan. I returned home and the following days, I started to receive phone calls from Dylan's commanding officers, which leads me to a conversation I had stated. I had that stated. Ma'am, we decided to hold Abigail open for just one more hour in hopes to save a few more lives knowing that the imminent attack was approaching the gate. That statement is ingrained inside my brain, knowing that if they had closed the gate, my son would be alive today. I have wondered who gave that order to hold that gate open for one more hour and for whom. Within the following weeks, Dylan's battalion began returning to Camp Pendleton is when Marines had the opportunity to reach out to the families. I was very fortunate that I lived close enough to the base that several of the Marines came to visit me and began telling me their stories. Every story being told coincided that Abbey Gate was ambushed and was a complex attack, not just a sui single suicide bombing, which was being reported on news outlets. I had spent the first couple of weeks wondering if my son's remains were not going to be intact to learning that my son had suffered injuries and had been medically treated with his, and his body was viewable. Whatever ounce of comfort that may have brought me, I knew I would be able to see my son one last time. I laid Dil Dylan to rest, witnessing thousands of people from across our country, offering their condolences and support, and again, Nothing was brought forth from anyone in our current administration. The anger I held inside on how our 13 kids were not being recognized nationally was becoming prominent. How could so many pe people pay their respects, but nothing at all from the President of the United States on something he had conducted? My social media accounts started receiving little to no attention, and my son's name seemed to be slowly not being recognized. I knew then that I was being targeted and shut down publicly by media outlets. I could hardly search anything that had to do with Afghanistan 
when just a month ago, our situation was everywhere? How could a worldwide event quoted the largest evacuation in American history just disappear? When failures are made, those who are involved in those failures want it to be forgotten. And that's what I felt was happening by our current leadership. Those Marines who had poured their hearts out to me and had been by my side grieving over their experiences, their stories were beginning to change. I knew they were being told they couldn't speak about their experiences any longer. On January 19th, 2022, a colonel in his JAG briefed me on the after action report of what was supposed to be the truth and facts of what happened at Abbey Gate. During this brief, it was explained to me where my son's location had been during the time of the attack and also his wound, wounds in accordance with his autopsy report. That is when I personally confirmed to myself that everything, even the way my son died, was being covered up. I was being given false information. While this colonel was describing Dylan's wounds, he was describing the report as intended towards a right-handed person. My son's personal trait was that he was left-handed. So when I questioned, how could my son obtain wounds on the opposite side of his body that he was illustrating, he couldn't respond, leading the conversation to the jack to change the subject. They continued into showing me drone footage that ultimately they claimed it had a three minute unexplainable lapse. This colonel told me, ma'am, you wouldn't wanna see it anyways. I had already seen my son's lifeless body and laid him to rest. Who was this colonel to make a decision what I was capable of watching? Afghanistan was no longer being spoken about and nothing seemed to be available anymore while I was continuing my search for answers. I was starting to feel defeated as to not being able to find anything. I felt I needed to find some kind of proof that would show that the people, these Marines, were not lying about their stories and possibly bring some acknowledgement back into the public eye. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into a couple of months. As the one year mark approached, I knew in my heart that my son and our 13 were not going to be honored or spoken more than just a small new community that we were circulating in. But in my head, I kept thinking, maybe, just maybe, their names would be spoken on national TV or even just anything to honor their sacrifices and people would remember them. As a mother of two Marines, I hold a different perspective of honor. It wouldn't have taken much effort to say their names and hold a moment of silence on this date. I wasn't surprised one bit when nothing was said for them. Everybody, every day I had just hoped and prayed that people wouldn't forget this withdrawal being that US troops had spent the past 20 years defending and protecting the Afghan civilians. I was fighting an endless battle without being heard. From zero honor or respect from our current administration being publicly removed to lies and cover-ups over facts and truths that were, that, sorry, that there was zero accountability and no real evidence provided or any, honest, or any honest information was being given to me. Months following, a couple of veteran Marines contacted me asking if I knew about the upcoming congressional hearings that would start to take place. I started to think, is this true? Maybe we can, we are able to start getting answers to some of my questions on my son's death. I am extremely grateful to those Marines telling their stories, which have all been everything I had been told from the very beginning. I feel with our combined efforts and our commitment to exposing what was really happening in Afghanistan, maybe I can finally get some truths about my son's death and the American people would see the failures that actually occurred. 
I feel I deserve real answers, real truths, real facts, and someone to be held accountable for the failures that occurred that took my son's life. I am here now with those hopes, with those same hopes that you are willing to stand by my side and help me get those truths and answers I've been looking for for almost two years. The impact of tragedy is painful. The impact of losing your child in a manner that, have, that could have been prevented and led people who seem to not have any sympathy for human lives is anger, frustration, disappointment, mental stress, physical pain, and more than just a broken heart that cannot be fixed. I hope one day as a mother, I can understand why my son was chosen to leave this earth. Behind every heart is a hero. Behind every hero is a story. Behind every story reveals what they endured for you, for me, and for all mankind. Thank you for allowing me to share just a glimpse of what I have been holding inside my heart since that date of August 26, 2021, as the day I lost my son, Lance Corporal, Dylan Marola, because legends live forever and their stories will always be told. Thank you.